Hi, this is PD at Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com, and this is tutorial 119. Now we're just going to pick up where we left off uh, the last tutorial. Uh, we got the basic GUI layout that we want for uh, looting chests and whatnot. Uh, now we're going to start adding some functionality to it. So I'm going to open up two scripts. Uh, the first one is the chess script, and the second one is the my GUI script. I'm going to head into Mono Develop. And I'm going to start with the chess script. Now, when we actually open the script, so I'm going to come down to the open routine. And right before the play animation or the animation play, uh, I want to broadcast a message uh, basically telling uh, that window, our, our loot chest window, to open up and to populate with a certain amount of items. So let's just start off by sending the message. So broadcast message, whoops, that's the wrong one. What we want is messenger. And then for the type that we're going to send, uh, for now I'm just not going to, well, let's just send an int for now. And we're going to want to broadcast. And the function we're going to want to broadcast to, uh, let's call this... Uh, Populate chess. And I'm just going to send in a number basically to tell it how many things to generate. Now this isn't the final way I want it to work, but it's a good enough start. And I'm also going to add one more uh, component here, and that's the messenger mode. We haven't actually gone over this yet. yet. And there's two options for messenger mode. There's do not require listener and require listener. By default, it requires a listener, which basically means that when it sends the message out, if there's nothing listening for it, you get that little error message in the console, even though your program still runs. And there's also do not require listener, where it basically sends it out and it doesn't really care if there's anyone there to receive it or not. So just for practice, or at least uh, as an example, because we haven't used it yet, I'm going to use the do not require listener property or parameter. I want to put a space there and space there. And now I'm going to want to add this function to my on GUI. So I'm just going to come down here and where it says populate, I'm going to change it to populate chest. Now it has to receive an int and I'm just going to call it X. And then for this uh, for loop down here, instead of looping till 25, I'll just loop for x. Now we were calling populate up here in our start method. We can get rid of that now. And I also want to uh, set the display to be false by default. Uh, okay, so after populate chess, is where I'm going to change it to true. So we want display loot window equals true. Now we're also going to have to add the on enable and on disable events for this as well. And I'll add them right after, uh, I'm going to add them right after start. And of course, you know, I want to delete my update function, but as you see, every time I delete it, usually in the next video, I find a reason to have it. So. We'll just leave it for now. So private void. I'm sorry, I believe it has to be public. I'll just try it as private because nothing ever has to access this. So private void on enable. It doesn't accept any parameters. So we're going to say messenger dot. Uh, forgot the parameter type which is int dot add listener and the e event that we want to listen for which was uh, just so I don't have any typos I'm just going to cut and paste and then the function that we're going to use to handle this event which is the exact same whoops uh, for some reason I ended up copying the whole line. 
And let's also add our disable. So on disable, we're going to remove a listener. And we'll want to know the event and the function. So we'll save that off. Let's head over to Unity. Uh, let's see if we get any errors. There's none, so let's start it up. And let's open our chest. There we go. One, two, three, four, five items. And let's try it again. There we go. Uh, it added another five items. Now we're going to want to have it so that when we uh, close this window, either by walking away too far away from the chest and having it auto close up on us, or by closing this button, we'll want it to erase everything that it has in its list. So let's head over to Mono Develop and let's work on the actual close button part. So it's right down here in the loop window, and here's our close button. Uh, instead of just saying the set the display to false, uh, I'm going to call a new function. And this new function that I want to call void, oh, forgot my space. And I'm just going to say clear window. Now with my clear window, I'll add that up here so it knows to call it. And I'm going to take this uh, display where we're setting it to false. I'm going to move this down here. And I'm also going to take our list, our loot items, and I'm going to call the clear command on it. So that will actually go through and just erase them all. So that should be okay. So we'll head over to Mono Develop, or sorry, Unity. We'll let that recompile. And I'm going to try that one more time. So it starts up. I run up to my chest, click on it. I get my five items. I hit the button to close. Of course, that doesn't close our chest yet. We'll want to send a message back out to it. And if we open it back up, we'll notice we get uh, only five items again. Now, of course, it's creating five new items. And that's not exactly what we want. But when we, when we actually get to the point where we're actually creating items, uh, that's when we'll actually stop uh, generating five new items every time. So let's turn that off. So let's set it up so the chest closes when we click the little close button. So I'm going to go back into Mono Develop, and I'm going to go back to the chest routine. And if you notice the order we're sending or we're performing our tasks here when the chest is open. So we're going to send our message, start the animation, uh, trigger our particle effect, play the sound, and then wait for the animation to finish before we change the state to be open. Now, if we want to be able to click that little close button to have the chest close, uh, we're going to have to change the order of where we put our messenger. Because uh, the way it is right now, it's going to send out, create the five items, call this function in, a, in my GUI, and that's going to display all the items. And then we're going to have a few seconds where if we close the chest uh, via that little close button, it's not going to actually be able to close the chest uh, through this script because the state is still going to be set to open. So to solve that, we can just take that and I'm going to move it right after where the state changes. So the state changes to open, then we'll send the message. Uh, that way there, if we close the chest right away, uh, it'll, it'll be safe to actually have uh, the message sent back here to close the chest. Now, I really don't want to actually send a message back. So what I'm going to do is actually send a game object. And that game object is actually just going to be this game object. So game object. And I'll just add it after this one. And I'm just going to put it in small letter or small G game object, which is just a reference to itself. So I'll save that off, come to my GUI. And I'm going to create a new private variable up here, and I'll just add it to the end. 
And this variable is going to hold a reference to the chest that we're currently opening right now. So we'll just turn around and say game object. And I'll just call it chest. And we'll have to come down to our populate chest because that's where we're actually uh, getting the value from. And we'll have to set up a game object. And I'm just going to call it geo. And the first thing I want to do is assign chest to equal geo. And then on clear window, I'm going to want to uh, set geo back to null, which I'll do here. I'm sorry, it's chess equals null because we no longer need that reference. But before I do that, I want to send a message to that script to actually close. So I'm going to say chess dot get component. Uh, the component we want to get is chest. And I actually want to just straight out call the close method. So let me see, what was it called? It was just called close, but it is an I enumerator. And it is private. So let's see if there's another way to trigger that. We could just, uh, let me see. We should just be able to call the mouse up event and it should automatically close for us because it'll already be set to open. So let's try that. Uh, we'll go back to, well, I'll just copy the event, make sure I don't get any typos or the function name. And I'm just going to type it in here. I'll save it. I'll head into model develop and see if it's actually going to let me do that. And it won't. So the error get is a method or delegate. Ah, uh, simple error right here. We just have to tell it that it's getting a game object. And we'll also want to add that in down here. And I think that should fix the errors. Yes, it does. And let's give this a try. See if we can actually close the chest now by closing the window. Open the chest. There's our items, and if we click here, it does indeed close the chest. Open it back up. Uh, I might have to shorten that animation a bit. It does seem a little long. We might be able to put some sort of uh, like opening or something like that. Some something to let them know that it is actually happening. But let's stop that. It's working. And it looks like we're already out of time for this tutorial. Time really flies by pretty quick sometimes. Anyway, I'm going to call this one done, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.